MSNBC backs up why I say this is the most propagandized country in the world. And they took the really real, real struggle that black women go through, and they using that to apologize for Kamala Harris, who is complicit with, with advancing white supremacy. That's what they do in this clip. So luckily, this clip is in three parts. It's gonna it's gonna be hard, guys. You gotta stick in, you gotta stick with it because this is a very important case study. Uh, <laughs> no pun intended with the Twitter handle of the person who's sharing this. I'm gonna share it for you guys so you see it. So hold on, let me share it with you guys. One second. But this is the perfect case study of why liberals uh, uh, put black women like Kamala Harris in a put in a position of power, and this is why they love Barack Obama because he killed the anti-war movement. He was in identity politics in this bastardized way. Well, what if, anyway, let's get into the video. I can go all day on this. Let's, let's actually dive in. I'm just making sure audio is good and everything. Do not come. Do not come. Republicans so if you guys don't know, on the con- that's the that's the video we should respond to because Kamala Harris took a ton of backlash because she's advancing the same policy that Stephen Miller and Donald Trump was advocating for. And they use the same line of attack that they're using. I'm going to explain as we watch this video. This is about six minutes, cut into three parts. A- after in each part, I'm going to get you guys' thoughts. And then we're going to move on, because it's tough. But this is a very <laughs> important cut st- case study, guys. S- stick in here with me, because this is exactly why liberals are so dangerous. And they hijack our real experience to fund and, and be complicit with white supremacy. Let me continue. Comments, of course. But they also didn't go over too well on the left, including with Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, who called the comments disappointing. So here's what I want to know. Given that immigration is one of the most complex issues we face as a country, a situation where there is no quick fix, is there anything Harris could have said that would not have drawn criticism? As a woman, a person of color... The, and I'm, I'm not going to stop it too much. I just want to hit this because... The funny thing is, they are responding to AOC criticism of Kamala Harris. So, I want you guys to keep that in mind. So, they were kind of painting AOC as anti-black woman for criticizing Kamala. I'm not going to I'm not gonna interrupt it too much. I'm sorry, I'll stop it. I'm going to stop it at the end of this first clip. I'm going to get you guys' thoughts after this. And the daughter of immigrants herself, the first ever vice president, who isn't a white man, by the way. Always remember that. Is Harris being held to a different standard? Joining me now to discuss is Anoushe Hossein. She's a journalist and the host of the very cool named podcast, Spilling Chai. She's also the author of the book, The Pain Gap, How Sexism and Racism in Healthcare Kill Women. So Thank you so much for joining us. Capitalism. <laughs> Thank you. You guys have anything you want to add? Because this, uh, this, is, this is painful. I'm, I'll let it finish. I mean, well, first off, the like look at the books like the books come on like really <laughs> like you didn't have to be that extra all right, all right, let's, all right let's that was a, that was a straight power trip for capitalism right there yes but, exactly let, yeah let's finish this i'm gonna get black burning bay her thoughts first this is like i said i have a hard time watching this whole thing without stopping and raging but let's let's see if we can get through it so much for having us really great to be on with you <laughs> I know, it's so fun. So Harris is really in a no-win situation with this crisis. Let's be honest about that up top. And I think this line from your recent op-ed in USA Today sums it up quite well. (laughs) You wrote, as a woman of color, Harris would be getting much more intense and negative blowback if she had flung open her arms with a huge Come to America sign and came off as soft on immigration on her first official trip to Guatemala and Mexico. So she didn't have a whole lot of options when it came to messaging on this trip. What do you think of how she did? You know, I think this was a really tough a topic, a really top, a tough it's portfolio, not. and for her first trip or her first international trip abroad, and it would have been a tough portfolio for even a seasoned diplomat, but because she is a woman and a woman of color, the level of scrutiny that she is getting from both the left and the right is really off the charts. And you know, it's interesting that you mentioned the point about white men, Zerlina, because we always give them the benefit of the doubt. No one criticized Jared Kushner. No one criticized. All right, so we got three clips. We don't we 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 get to the other two, but I want to give you guys a uh, reaction on that one first. Okay, well, first. Wow, I got a lot of say. Uh, this is tough. <laughs> Go ahead, okay, you first. First, um, I, because my dad is an avid CNN, MSNBC watcher, I remember doing the, the President Trump administration 
you know, when they use the exact same rhetoric, now Kamala's using that rhetoric and it's immigration is a complex issue. Um, it's a tough topic or there's no quick fix. Where was that rhetoric when the racist Republicans were using that same, you know, rhetoric? It, why is it a, a, a tough topic with Kamala, but was it easier under Trump? That makes no sense. So that um, really upset me. But this is what really, 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 really pisses me off as a woman of color. So you're saying that we're attacking Kamala because she's a woman of color, as if there aren't women of color crossing the border. So how does that even make sense? So I'm attacking Kamala because she is a Black woman. What about the Black women? Because some of those people from Guatemala are Black. Some of those people from Mexico are also Black. So what about them coming over? Do those Black lives don't matter because Kamala is, is sending them away? Was it different when um, Miller was sending them away? Like the use, the weaponry, to try to weaponize on that, <laughs> weaponizing her Blackness against other Black people pisses me off. So yeah, you can tell like, I'm flustered. I'm mad. <laughs> I'm mad. Because... Can I say one more thing um, that I think is important? And I got this from Andre and he said, and I think this really, really applies here when he says, we want Black people to have a seat at the table. You know, I do want a Black vice president. I do want a Black president, but not at the expense of poor Black people, not at the expense of poor Black immigrants. You know what I'm saying? So, and I think that's the, the, the situation here. You know, like you don't want us to criticize Kamala, but if we criticize her, if we don't criticize her, poor Black women are hurting. Um, immigrants are hurting. You know what I'm saying? So, I think the identity politics can go both ways. So I mean, just yeah. put it this way. I, that's all I'm gonna say on this is if this had been Gretchen Whitmer or Amy Klobuchar, it would have been the same way. They would have just it's said, Oh, is it because she's a woman? Is it mm -hmm. because she's a woman that that they're being so tough on her? Mm -hmm. That's literally all they would have done the same exact thing. They 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 actively vote or they act they actively show actions that are against the words that they speak when they're politicking, because when they were politicking, what did Kamala say? Kamala exactly. was over there. She posted, exactly. she tweeted so many times talking about, "Hey hey ho ho, you're here to stay." Whatever, like all that crap. No, you just you just proved that you are the snake that we thought you were. That's all I'll say. All right, and not only is she the snake that we thought she is, but she doesn't, I don't know if she doesn't realize it, but she's being used by the Biden administration. You know what I'm saying? Because Biden already said, I'm running in 2024. You know what I'm saying? So he's having her do the dirty work That's while cool. he yep. looks, while he gets unscathed, you know? Yeah, so, He's telling her, he's telling her what, what they always tell black folks. Wait your turn. Just wait. Wait your turn. Wait your turn. And when it comes to her turn, what are we going to remember? We're going to remember this shit. You know what I'm saying? We're going to remember when she laughed at the people at the border. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, it's it'll catch up thing. with her. I, I saw a tweet. I saw a tweet where um she was at the at the gay pride festival in DC. And somebody, somebody like, you know, like somebody showed that. And then somebody commented and like, you know, retweeted it in a comment and said, why is she always laughing? Like, why does it always look like she's laughing at something? And like, I'm like, well, why do you think? Because she actively scammed all of y'all into voting for her. So she's laughing at y'all for voting for them. That's why. She like, she has a lot to laugh about right now. Especially in San Francisco, um, our prisoners... Um, our trans prisoners were seeking health care, you know. Um, gender affirming health care is health care. And she was not having it. So how dare you go to the LGBTQ pride parade knowing that you wouldn't even give 
the trans community health care. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, uh, hey, I, I know Raytheon, Raytheon is down with pride. Bank of America, you know, these, these, ver- these institutions <laughs> that is responsible for untold amount of human suffering. They, they got, oh, we offer, we offer gay pride. No shame. Well, you, you know, these same companies are about between the June, uh, Juneteenth too. You know, they about oh, all, yeah, they, know they, they take are. advantage. Let's, 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 let's go clip two. I know you, you guys got a lot to say. Sorry, let's, we let's, mad. <laughs> yeah, let's go clip two. We still got two more clips. And then I'll give, I'll give, I'll give the platform right back to you, Black Burma, baby, because I got a lot to say. The, what I want to finish on. And I'm not going to die right now, but I'm going to explain to you. Can you guys see the framing that MSNBC is doing? This is a pro-war in framing because people are are inherently anti-war. So they got to frame it as a complicated issue. Guys, it's not a complicated issue. And I'm going to explain it afterwards. I'm going to get into the details after we watch the videos. But just keep that in mind. It's not complicated. The issue at the border is not complicated at all. But let's, I'm going to, let me. It wasn't complicated for Reagan. Let me, let me, uh, one second. Sorry if I'm looking like back and forth. I'm I'm working <laughs> no. right now, so if I'm not looking, right, it's because I'm, sure I'm at so work. See it. Okay, so now now let's go to the same clip. I know you, you guys in comments say you guys are gonna stick with us, so no, it's painful, but we're gonna get through. I'm gonna try to get the. Make, I'm gonna try to watch the entire clip once for not I'm delivering not peace to the Middle East. But people really do expect Kamala Harris, our vice president, to solve the border issue overnight. Uh, all that being said, and I know she is in a really tough situation, no, it right. was jarring um, to hear this administration sound so much like the last administration, especially on the issue of immigration, and because she is the daughter of an immigrant. But as I say in my USA Today piece, as, a, as the first black and first Asian and first woman to hold the second most powerful job in the country, she can't keep anybody happy. It's not possible. You know, one of the things I think is really important to always remember is that the intention behind a critique, that matters. And so the intentions behind the critiques from the left, they're really different than the criticism she gets from the right. They're like, go put on the little vest and stand at the border and do cosplay. Uh, somehow that's supposed to effectively solve this complex issue. Um, speak a little bit, though, more to what you just said about how it was jarring for a da- the daughter of immigrants to say, do not come. I mean, you know, how can she say something different that is more authentic to her own experience? Exactly. Well, you know, she's the reason she's in such a tricky position is because the Republicans are very good on this issue. Not good on this issue with solutions what? and policy, but with their messaging and with their false what? information and basically lies. They have framed this issue. So they have their talking points already ready to go. To be quite blunt with you, Zerlina, it was it's shocking that the vice president wasn't um, briefed better wasn't prepared better with her language on with her language and her wording on on such a complicated issue because for the republicans going to the border is a photo opportunity (laughs) kamala harris is tasked with uh solving the root issues that drive the border crisis so you know while the republicans are pouncing on this the messaging around it is the fact that it's a very complex issue and so while the republicans are very good with images the dems really need to get a little bit better around our messaging because we kind of sent the vice president now that's clip two we still got one more we gotta pause it and dive into once again there's so much to unpack from every single one of these (laughs) so much to unpack so, once again, they deflected notice, blame towards notice the party. How she like, kept it. Complicated issue. Complicated issue. They, Complicated I'm, issue. I'm gonna get Black Brain Baby issue. in here, but they was like, "This is Republicans are good at framing these issues." What you have to agree yeah. with the Republicans? And then she was like, "Oh well, uh, she, uh, it's it's crazy that she wasn't more well prepared. Well prepared for what? Like, she, what, was she supposed to lie? This is their stance. Their stance is the same stance as Steve Miller, and that has nothing to do with the fact that she's a black woman that she getting this pushback." Which just thought was black, Bernie Bay, because I, I still want to break down why it's BS, but I'm going to say that for last. What, go ahead. Okay, so my um, thing is Republicans shouldn't even be mentioned because Republicans didn't run to, to the White House on a softer immigration policy. Um, Republicans didn't run on, we're going to get the babies out of the cages. You know what I'm saying? So, and Republicans don't have the... Um, aren't 
in charge or don't have the, I can't think of the word I'm looking for, but in the House and in the Senate and the White House all belong to the Democrats. So why are we blaming Republicans? Why are Republicans even being mentioned? Why are we blaming them for what came out of this woman's mouth? You know, exactly. and I think it's, it's disrespectful. And I'll tell you why. You will sit here and say Black women are everything. They'll save democracy. Um, we'll save the country. But we don't know what's coming out of our mouths. We can't be accountable for what we say you twice. See how, you see how they said, they were like, this is a no-win situation. What are you supposed to do? Stand against white supremacy. Like, they, and what you see, they are mentioning Republicans. And they want them to appease Republicans on this issue. Mm -hmm. No, you stand for human rights. They have a legal okay. right to seek asylum. I'm going to get into that as a thirst clip. Because I'm going okay, okay, we'll to explain to you guys why. I'm going to do the actual technical <laughs> breakdown after the clip. Because yeah. when you actually understand the breadth of this issue, and I'm going to get Savvy on here and get a reaction. Uh, do you have anything you want to add to the same clip? Because I'm going to do my last breakdown third clip to explain why everything they just mentioned is BS. But anything you want to add, Savvy on, before we go to the last clip? If anything, I will just say... Notice how she just keeps saying complicated issues. Yeah. She's saying complex three times. Three and times. She's trying to drive that into the viewers. He's trying to drive that in to all of the, all of the, I wouldn't even call them viewers. I call them zombies. But <laughs> anyways, she's just trying to drive that in so that people can be like, oh, but they're being so hard on her. She's, she's only doing the best that she can. And honestly, it is not a hard issue. It isn't. It wasn't a hard issue for Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan was one of the like one of the immigration presidents of all the evil shit that that man did. I'm gonna ask you about that. Say, hold that thought. Hold that thought. I'm gonna ask you. I, I want you to keep that thought in your head because I want you to expand on okay. that later. Let's watch this last clip, and then I think the, the theme of our next reaction pretty much breaking down why everything I just said is BS. And I think what you about to say about Reagan is gonna help. So hold that thought, and then we're gonna break down. Um, exactly why like this is a horrific uh propaganda piece we got one more let's get ready to screen share it okay so sorry guys i know you guys been the thing this one only 90 seconds we ain't near the end so Thank you, you, got, sir. you guys been uh stick with me i know the comments <laughs> have been uh cracking me up so far uh but this is an important lesson for us to learn about the media that's the last clip here guys. this issue it feels to me like we, we cannot forget how complex this issue is. And it sometimes is. I'm like, if a criticism is, why didn't you go do this thing instead of that thing, then t explain to me how doing A or this thing would help. Um, yeah. Last question. Women and men aren't assessed through the same lens. And that's one thing we have what? to keep in mind whenever we're talking about the vice president. Um, Bernie Sanders? Ten women get angry and actually <laughs> show it. Um, is that something far, that we are going to have <laughs> to get used to now that we have a vice president in Kamala Harris, who is a woman? How does she navigate that dynamic? It is so tricky. I have to pause right there. You guys realize what, what they just asked? How can Kamala Harris navigate apologizing for a white supremacist immigration system as a black woman? You guys realize that was they asked her, right? Mm -hmm. yes. I'm gonna rewind it just a little bit so you guys can read yeah, it. I did. I called it. But that's what they, that's what she just asked her. And Kamala Harris, who is a woman, how does she navigate that dynamic? It is so tricky, and it's full of landmines. And as you and I know, Zerlina, and especially as you know, as a black woman, woman of color, women of color, we're not allowed to get emotional not or being removed to be and dismissed and written off as, as hysterical so fast. I, agree I mean, faster it. than you can say border, which is what I talk about in my upcoming book. We will be labeled and dismissed as this hysterical, even when we have. What makes it so evil? It's because you guys said you guys agree with that assessment that black women are always judged for being, but they are using that to apologize for this horrific issue. Like they're taking a really real issue to apologize for right wing extremism. Last twenty seconds, I get you guys' thoughts, and now I'm gonna do my final. Break. Valid to say, but I do think that Kamala Harris is in a tight spot, and people need to remember that just as Jared Kushner didn't deliver mid his piece, our vice president is not going to be able to solve border crisis overnight. So there they essentially there's nothing else she says of value there. But there she essentially is just admit Kamala Harris is like <laughs> just like uh Stephen Miller and, and these uh far right wingers. 
What's your thoughts, Bernie, uh, Black Bernie Babe? And then Savion did not. And then I'm gonna do a breakdown on why everything they just say is BS. But go, I'll start with you, Black Bernie Babe. Well, I do think Black women, we aren't allowed to get angry. We aren't. Is my we aren't allowed to get upset. You know, so we do have to handle ourselves <clears throat> carefully within the workplace. However, she wasn't upset. You know what I'm saying? She should have been upset. That would have actually been a moment yeah. to be upset. You know, she wasn't upset. So why are we even, you know, bringing that up? Also, um, they say it's no quick fix. And I kind of, I disagree. Let me tell you why I disagree. We, st- we destabilize these countries and we create these refugees, you know what I'm saying, that come to our border. So why don't we get the fuck out of people's business? Why don't we fix what we did in Guatemala? You know, um, the U.S. has done plenty of horrible things to Guatemala, just like they did to Black people, giving them syphilis. We did the same thing to Guatemala. Um What about the CIA-led coups, you know, that we did? Let's fix that. What about um, the CIA funding inhumanities in Guatemala? You know, like, we can fix some things, you know, but fixing those things will require giving Black and brown people money, and we don't want to do that. You know what I'm saying? So I do agree that as Black women, we have to tread lightly in the workplace, but if as a black woman, if you're going to be upset, that would have been the moment to be upset. You know, that would have been the moment to be upset because we're literally keeping babies in cages. That didn't stop, you know? And that was the rhetoric you guys ran on. So I think she's right. We can, we have to tread lightly, but I don't think that was the moment she should have tread lightly. I think she should have been upset. Well said, Savion. What's your la- what's your final thoughts on the fi- on the overall clip? And I go last. I'm glad Monica brought up look, like Bernie Babe. I'm glad that she brought up the fact of children in cages. That's what that's where I'll go with this. Just because of the fact of Ronald Reagan. So in 1987. If I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure it was 1987. Is it 86, 87? No, it was in 87 um, is when he signed the law. So the law was passed in 86, but in 87, the Immigration Reform and Control Act was what uh, what made <clears throat> that well is what allowed companies to not to t- take advantage of illegal immigrants. So it stopped companies from being able to hire illegal Im- immigrants which in itself could be a bad thing or even a good thing just because of the fact that they can take advantage of them and pay them anything that they want to pay them. Um, So one that, but one thing that was really good in that bill, if you don't know, is that it gave legalization status to all minor children of parents Mm -hmm. that were granted amnesty. So why is it that we can't, have Biden do something like this? Why is it? Why isn't it that Kamala is not doing something like this, where she's the ch- the child, you know, of immigrants? Why isn't she fighting for amnesty for all of these children in cages, like mm-hmm. Reagan did? Why isn't it that she's doing something like this, where we have people who are taking advantage of the system? who are taking advantage of people like them and being hard and using, I guess you could say using the, using the border as, you know, as their main um, way of saying that, that things are bad because yeah, you can go down to Texas and look at the border. Yes. There are illegal, illegal immigration issues. And if that's the way you see it, but I see it as a way of amnesty. And if there's not a way to give people the right to come here, but yeah. then you have this woman who is the vice president who's saying that you can't, like, don't come here, don't come here. But you are literally the child of immigrants. You are the direct descendant of immigrants who came to this country. And yet you are not living your parents' dream. You're not giving those parents who had your dream exactly. to become vice exactly. president in this country 
you're not giving those same kids that opportunity that you gave, which makes you a direct hypocrite of your own, your literal whole life. Mm-hmm. And I'll end there. That's, a, that's, a well, that's well said. And you guys hit all, like, so many of the points I was about to hit. But this is, and Black Brain Bay, we will point out, there was repeating over and over and over again, they want you to think this is a complex issue. Yeah. This is not a complex issue. You guys know no. why? They was upset with Trump on this issue because they have a legal right to seek asylum. So this comp is not a complex complex issue, and this is why Zerlina she's having a hard time selling it. This is why she had a hard time selling it, and this is why Steve Bannon had a hard time selling it because you can't sell breaking people human rights. This is the basic right to seek asylum. Now, why? Is the Joe Biden? Why does Kamala Harris sound just like Trump on this issue? I will tell you guys why. This is tied to U.S. imperialism. All these issues connect. So you guys understand that we support the neoliberal uh, dictator in Guatemala. You guys realize that we support the fascist regime in Haiti. So this is geopolitical. Look beyond the issue. So if we deny the people who are coming there who are seeking asylum, we legitimize. The regime that they are fleeing. Let me say that again. Let me say it another way. So if we accepted them into asylum, that means we are acknowledging that there is something wrong with the state that we are propping up that they are fleeing to. So we deny their legal right to asylum and we put the burden on the individual. Right? That's what they do. Oh, you got to go back to your country. You got to clean your own country up. Oh, you're not following the process. Even though that's not true. They blame. They should blame from anyone except the illegitimate state that the United States are allies with. So that's why the lady on MSNBC can't tell her audience that. They can't tell her audience that the people are fleeing Guatemala because we are propping up an illegitimate fascist regime. Yep. They and can't but, like, bring to, up. To go on top of what you're saying, Bolivia. Bolivia is the yep. perfect example of this. What happened when, when Evo Morales was kicked out of Bolivia? In the U.S., silence there was nothing there was nothing about it because they didn't want to talk about how they could helped uh, yeah. start a coup in bolivia did they mention the coup that the cia had been responding they they cooed their leaders multiple times there was a report in, that came out in 1996 from the presidential oversight committee where they literally admit that the cia funded counterinsurgents in guatemala did they mention that in that segment in that segment that we just watched yeah. msnbc did they tell you that did they tell nope. you that ronald reagan funded CIA oper- uh, uh, operations in Guatemala that led to the direct torture of leftist activists in Guatemala. Did they tell oh, you? Oh, don't get me started on what, <laughs> what Ronald Reagan started with the CIA. Oh, Just for black people alone. The war on drugs. Okay? They can't and do this on top of that, system. who helped him do this? Joe motherfucking Biden. All these issues connect, guys. All these issues connect. That's why they can't Say what the real they gotta say, oh, it's complicated. Oh, it's com-. no, we are complicit with destabilizing these countries, so we deny them asylum because we can't. Because if we want to accept them to asylum, we have to take responsibility that that delegitimizes the regimes we are propping up. Meanwhile, we're attacking Putin and Putin, right? And Maduro, like, oh, these are our enemies, right? But Ivan Duque in Colombia, you guys realize that he's backed by Joe Biden and they are executing people in the streets. Because they're protesting yeah. neoliberalism. They try to increase a, 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 a they try to implement a regressive tax on the working class. And then mm-hmm. the, the Colombian people had enough. And then they launched a spontaneous general strike. We covered it on my last show where they broke down where it, it, the, there was a 75% consensus towards general strike immediately. It came out of nowhere. And people were like, oh, why are you ask, why are you advocating for a general strike in America? Because we've seen it in action in other countries. We well, just not there yet. We're just not there yet. Wow. And these these countries are being backed by the United States. So how dare we criticize someone else? We are sponsoring the Colombian government, the fascist regime, killing innocent protesters. What does that sound like? We are funding the genocide in the apartheid state of Israel. We're blocking ICC probes into the uh, Israel army that will expose the crime against humanity the same way they expose the crime against humanity the American police are complicit with when, they, when it comes to killing black men. All these things are connected. 